Hello everyone, it's Cardboard Collation. I'm Steven. I'm Rezvan. And we figured we would bring you a how to play of Travel Zombicide 2nd Edition. This is for one to six players, it's for ages 14 plus, and it takes about one hour. It's from Simon Games and Guillotine Game Studio. All right. Do, 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 do. <laughs> so first off, we're going to try to make this quick, and we're not going to go in depth with all the, the rules. There's not a ton, but we're, it's travel, so we're trying to make this travel. All right. So first off, you want to go ahead and open up your case, which makes sense. And it, you have to take everything out and then flip the case over. So once you have that all done, then you want to go ahead and choose a mission. Right. Once you choose your mission, you can place your tiles. So you get a whole book of missions. This has, what did we say last time? 20 something, 24 missions, 25 missions in it. So you go ahead and flip through here and you pick one of your missions. We are set up for mission one and it gives you all the information you need to set up the mission. So at first you go ahead and you set your tiles up. This will tell you what side you want, where you put the tiles. You can also look visually at it. It tells you how many um, spawn zones you need, an exit zone if you need it, how many um, objective tokens, uh, pimp, what are they called? Pimp weapon crates, I always want to call them pimp tokens, pimp weapon crates, and where the survivors start. So you go ahead and you get the boards out and then you set out all your tokens. So all the tokens are going to be your objective tokens, your pimp crates, your doors, any zombies that might um, be put out on the board. Um, let's see if I can grab a mission where it shows the zombies. Of course I don't. All right, so we'll just go to this. This is the tutorial mission. This shows you zombies that you need to put out. It's a walker, a walker, a runner, and a fatty. So it'll tell you all that. So during the first part of the setup, you go ahead and put out all the tokens, all the doors, all the zombies if needed. Now you might also need um, police cars, or on the other side is the pimp car, the pimp ride. And if you use this, you wanna make sure you go ahead and get out this reference card which one side has the police, the other side has your pimp mobile, that's what it is. So we don't need it for this one, so we're gonna go ahead and set them over here. Now, the other thing to pay attention to is you might only use six um, tiles. You do have these little clear plastic things. There's holes in the board set up to kind of push the board together so they hold tight. All right, so there's that. Now let's go ahead and jump back into the setup. You went ahead and you put all your tokens out. After that, I wanna make sure I follow it in the book so I can tell you guys exactly how to do it. All right, once you get all those out, you pick the number of survivors that you wanna play with. So right now we have six survivors set up. Now you can play with two players with six survivors, one player with six survivors, all those kind of combos. But you go ahead and you figure out how many survivors you're gonna have. Now, as I told you, you go ahead and you set out, um, if you're using the police car, you set out the police car, we're not, we're not using it, or the pimp mobile. The other thing you do is you make stacks. These are your weapon cards up here. So we have weapons and stuff. Then you have your pimp weapons, which are these ones. Do you want to show them the pimp weapons? There you go. And you also have your standard weapons, which are over here. You go ahead and separate all these out and you get them ready to put out. And also your zombie cards. So there you have your zombie cards, which tell you how the zombies work when they spawn. All right, so as you can see, um, when you look in the game, they have it set up a little different. They don't really tell you how to set up this board. Let's see if I can find it. This has, there's a point where it shows you. So in this, it kind of shows you a setup kind of like this, where to put everything. I just think it's weird that you have so many tokens and stuff just loosely sitting around when this is supposed to be a travel thing. So what we have here is kind of how we do it for the most part. Um, we put our weapons here. What, if you discard anything, I just flip them over and you can put it on the back side over here, right? So, you know, you pull a card off the top, you do what the card does and you just put it discard on the back side. So they're all kind of in one, one area. And it's just really to make more room. The other way that um, we did it was we made this the discard, but I realized we have these extra tokens, we have the pimp cards, and just somewhere to put them. We also have put out the zombies out here and your abomination. I just kind of set them there because he's all by himself. All right, 
All right, so back to um, going through these steps so I don't mix it up for you guys. The starting equipment card, you deal the cards out to each person, right? Blindly give each person. You can pick cards however you want to do it, but they say blindly give each person a card. So we've blindly dealt the starting weapons to each player, all right? Then you place the miniatures on the board, and they're color-coded. So brown, you can just look for Phil over here, whose name's in brown. You know that's your miniature, right? Amy's purple, right? Ned's red. Ned's red. There you go. All right, so you go ahead and um, set those people down. I like Wanda. Wanda is this. Yeah, you like Wanda. She's an angry chicken. <laughs> She's an angry chicken. All right. Um, once you do that, then you go ahead and you give each player their player board, right? So we might as well go over the player board really quick right now. So you give each player their player board, and you give them some of these clips, basically, to mark. This is your adrenaline here, right? Every time you kill a zombie, you bump up on adrenaline. Certain objectives will give you certain amount of adrenaline. So that moves up your adrenaline tracker, right? The next thing you do is you go ahead and you put one down for each of the skills. So everybody starts with the blue set because you're in blue. Once you bump up, yellow set, bump to orange, you have the orange set. Yep, they kind of slide on there like that. Yeah, and you have extra ones. So you go ahead and you put these in there. You have your um, health tracker right here, which is the red one, black one here, oops, now I knocked it loose, and then the uh, yellow one right here. You also have this clear clip that kind of holds the board, right? And you can put your hand weapons, these are the weapons that are in your hand, and then you have three for your backpack. You can carry a total of um, five cards. Most cards are only active when they're in your hands. There are some that are active when they're in your backpack. It's usually re-rolls for ammo and stuff like that, but we can kind of go over that. So the other thing, you get the art on this card, you get your player's name, these are your abilities, right? On the back, I think this is actually quite interesting. A bigger picture of the character, but it tells you um, some of these key words. So ambidextrous, slippery, um, matching set, that's these words that are on here, and it does it for each player. All right, so you get the card set up for the player. Each player gets their card set up, and you go ahead and give them three more of these because it's as they go through, they get to pick a new one. So once you hit the oop, once you hit the yellow level, then you would put one at yellow, and that shows that you have those two extra skills. You hit orange, you pick one of those. You hit red, you pick one of the red ones, so on and so forth. All right, so we have the player um, board set up. And then it's just finding the first player, right? Um, and it says the player with the fire axe is the starting player. I didn't do that when I played with Resvon, or Resvon and I played earlier. But that means this first player token, which is over here, these things are small, so when you have big you know, sausage fingers, they're hard to hold. But this is the first player token. This goes to the person who has the axe. And then play goes clockwise. All right, so now we got everything set up. We're ready to jump in and play the game. So let's go over um, how the game plays. So they are there are certain conditions for winning the game. I'm assuming this one, you have to do something and make it to the exit. Okay, we have our noise tokens over here. That's true. We Res don't want to talk about uh, noise and quiet when, I, when they use. We, we will. When we use, for example, this, if uh, she shoot with that, it's making noise. If it's make noise, in that part, she have to put one of this next of that. And the next round, we take back off. Yeah? Yeah. So that's how noise works. You have some weapons that make no noise. Mm -hmm. Like this, you have the no noise weapon. So there's noise and no noise. The other thing I forgot to say as we were talking about, I kind of just ran past it. We have the miniatures already put out, right? So you have your miniatures out. All right, so how this game plays is you have some object objectives. The objective in this one, I assume, is to do something and get to the exit. Here's your exit marker. How you win the game is doing what it says in the mission and then going to the exit. So when you open these missions, we'll just open a random one, it has your objectives. This tells you what to do, what you're trying to do in the game. Now... Ways to lose the game is not to hit your objective, and if any survivor dies, game over. You've lost the game. 
So to win, you have to do what the objective is based on the mission. To lose, it's just your survivor, um, one survivor in the group dying. All right, so let's go ahead and look at how this plays. You have a player phase, right, starting with the first player. And let's say we're playing two players. It's just Resvan and I. These are all her players. She's the first player because she has the axe. She has the hero with the axe. She can play her people in any order she wants to. Once she's done playing through all three of her characters, then it moves over to me. Let's say if we're playing this two player, I play through all my characters. That's one player phase. Now, if there's six players or five or four and so forth, once everybody's played, done what they want to do on the board, then it's the zombie phase, right? And once the zombie phase is over, you go back to the player phase, back and forth until either you hit the objective and win the game or you lose the game. All right. So let's go ahead and jump through, well, after the zombie phase, I just glanced at that, there's the end phase, and that's what Resvan was talking about, where you clean up. So you clean up any noise, tokens that are on the board, things like that. All right, so we can go over some definitions. Resvan asked this when we first played, because we normally play fantasy zombicide. She's used to that. She was asking how we know what are the different areas. So there's zones, and zombicide you move by zone. So as you can tell, maybe, I think it's pretty easy to tell, but there's a zone um, outline, right? You can see the little squares outlined. In the rooms, there's zone outlines. There's no wall here. This is one whole zone, right? You have these four together, one whole zone. So the, the lines kind of designate zones. The edge of the board designates a zone. That's so you know zones. These are considered dark rooms. These are considered rooms with light. So you see dark rooms and light rooms. And I didn't mention it in the setup. This took me a second to figure out. But where you put your um, objective token, there's little red boxes. It might be kind of hard to see, and I'd have to disrupt the whole board to bring it up to you guys. But there's little red boxes, and there's little boxes with yellow. Right? So they're kind of hard to see, but little yellow, little red. That tells you where you put these in the game. All right. So back to it. So we have the zones. That's how you understand zones. Um, what else you might want to understand here is line of sight. So in Zombicide, line of sight works like this, or at least in Zombicide Second Edition, the Travel Edition. If we have this person here, and I can look and find out it's Doug because it's color matched, Doug can see all the way down the street. Line of sight is all the way down the street. Doug cannot see the square. He cannot see diagonal, right? And then you also have, if Doug is, let's see if I can find an option where we're looking at it, do, 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 do. Let's say Doug's right here. Doug's line of sight, he can see into the first room of the building. Even though there's little open doors here, he cannot see in those doors. So when you're looking in a building, your line of sight is one um, area. And he can see this entire zone right here. Even though it seems, oh wait, there's a room right there. So let me correct that. He can see all the way over here if there's a zombie here. Though it doesn't look like he can, this is a zone. He can see one zone, so that's within his line of sight. If Doug turns this way, he can see all the way down to there. If he if he is staying here again, he just can watch this this room. No, this. Bele. Okay. All right. So that's line of sight. That's pretty much how it works. When you move around, you move in the same way that you do line of sight, right? So you move um, orthogonally, so you move in straight lines, you can't diagonally move. How the zombies move will be in straight lines, right? Just think no diagonal straight lines. All right, now let's go over some of the nomenclature so we can look at some of the cards. So let's go ahead and look at weapon cards or item cards. And I think I set these up correctly. So we have different item cards here. I think there should be one more. Oh, there's a couple more. Oh, oh, let me keep grabbing. So, when you look at this card, it gives you some information on this card. This is the amount of spaces that your um, weapon can be used. Zero is in this, the zone that you're in, right? This is the amount of dice that you roll with this weapon. So, you would roll two dice. Each, each die counts as an attack. So if you roll two dice, there's two zombies in your zone, you roll two dice and you get the number you need to get, you, you can kill two zombies because you have two dice. Each dice is one attack. 
And this is what you have to roll on your die to get a success. So with the, um, I don't know what this is called, a kukabi. It's a special kind of knife. Um, with this die, you have to have four plus, And you have a damage of two. You have to kill a zombie in one whole attack. There's no dividing the um, power up or the attacks up. Like I hit him for one, you hit him for one. You have to hit the zombie full through. And, there, and we'll go over kind of the chart with the zombies, but some take two, some take three, right? The other thing, as we pointed out earlier, this makes no noise, right? This knife makes no noise, but it also does not open a door. So you can't open a door with this um, knife. I didn't put one of those in here, but let's go ahead and look Can at... Yeah. Uh, the fatty needs two. Uh, they need two. Mm -hmm. Uh, attack uh, when you attack with the with this card you can kill fatty of if it was a number one if it uh, had a shoot number one it means you couldn't you can't kill fatty just you can kill runners and walkers yep all right so the um symbol that I'm talking about to open doors is this symbol right here. So just keep that in mind. That means you can open a door and it makes noise. Some things open the door and they make no noise. So in this case, you can open the door, but you make no noise. So both these can open doors. All right, so more on the nomenclature of the card. So that's kind of your weapon card. It will also tell you the type of weapon it is a lot of times. So it might be hard to see. These are, like I said, sorry guys, sausage fingers and small cards. If you could see that little knife right down there, that means it's a melee. And then with firearms, or with range, I keep calling them firearms, you will get the little pistol down there. All right. So you get the pistol lets you know that it's a ranged weapon. You get the knife to let you know that it's a melee weapon. All right. Other nomenclature you might have on the card is things like this. Plenty of bullets. I won't read through this all the way, but I'll give you the gist of it. It means that you can re-roll. When you do a range attack with this weapon, you can re-roll your dice once per, per um, go. Then you have stuff like this. You have the Molotov cocktail, right? So the Molotov cocktail is range um, one, right? So you have a range of one. You roll no dice. We got a cartoon on the board. <laughs> Um, sorry about that guys. We don't have a dog here now, but we have a cat. So you don't roll any dice. You don't have to roll anything and it kills everything in a square. So if you throw a Molotov cocktail right here, it kills everything, including the abomination, which takes three hits to kill. All right? So Molotov is not the only way to kill the abomination. You can have some, um, bonuses on your characters that help kill the abomination but this kills everything in the square, right? So your range is one to one. It means you can't throw it in your own square, you can't throw it in two squares. So they couldn't throw it down here. They don't want to because it's gonna kill everybody, including survivors. So they want to throw it one, but they also can't throw it, if they're standing here, they can't throw it two away. It's only one zone away, right? It makes a noise, right? That's the noise token, so you'd put a noise token there, right? And once you use the Molotov, you get rid of it. And then you have canned food. I think it's a bag of rice and water. Um, these things give you three adrenaline points. That's your points up here that help you rank up. These give you three adrenaline points. Then you have this one. Ah, zombie. That means a walker spawns in that zone, right? Sorry, I went, hit the camera. Whenever you get this card, it means a walker spawns there. All right. Well, uh, I want to say something. We talked about noise, but we didn't say why noise is a bad. Noise is a bad because when somewhere we put noise, for example, here, the zombies try to come to the noise. They walk to the noise. And for this, we usually try to use the cards. We don't need to make noise. If we need make noise, then we will know the zombies will coming to us. Yep. So the, the noise in your heroes all always make one noise. So zombie, we'll talk about in zombie movement, but it's line of sight, then noise, right? All right. So other nomenclature, I think I set these cards up too so we can see it. Oh, hitting the camera every time because that's how it works. 
two, three, I think these are all of them I need. I think this covers everything. So you get three types of cards. I grab four. We don't need this one. So in the zombie cards, you get three types of cards. Now, there are cards for runners. There's cards for fatties, cards for walkers, right? There's also cards for the abomination. But what I'm saying is there's different types of cards. This is your basic card. This just tells you based on your color level, whoever in the group's the highest. If they have orange or red or yellow, then you follow this. If everybody else is blue and one has orange or yellow, you follow orange, right? And it tells you how many runners you would put in that spot. You have one of these for fatties, one of these for walkers. All right, this one is extra activation. So it'll tell you all walkers. And if you notice, the blue says nothing happens. The same with the abomination card. When you're in the blue, no abomination comes, right? But in any of these, it means all walkers get one activation. And we'll talk about how the walkers, how all these zombies activate when we talk about the zombie phase. Then the other one, which is new to us, is zombie rush. And it tells you right down, right here. So what when you get a zombie rush, it'll tell you fatty rush. There's no runner rush. There's fatty rush, walker rush, no abomination rush. But what it means is you spawn them and they get one activation. Right, And we'll talk about how the activations work for the zombies here in a second. So those are your card nomenclature. Did I miss anything? Oh, no, I think. No, just still we don't know how that car is work. Oh, we'll talk about the car Yes, we later. talked. Okay. And the door, they <laughs> open well, like this. Yeah, we'll talk about the doors when we go through the... Um, yeah. Well, physically, that's how you open them, right? Shut door, open door. If you guys can see here, you have the door closed, the door open, all right? So that's physically how they work. So let's go ahead and go through the actions. Oh, um, if uh, someone, for example, I want to use some uh, zombies here. For example, we have uh, here some, I'm sorry, if we have here some zombies, okay, and someone's here, and you want, uh, for example, this, what's name, dog. Dog try to attack to these zombies if he rolled the dice, but he can't shoot to them. One of this friend get uh, damage. Yes, I said. You said it kind of right. If there's a survivor... Shoot with the this. Yeah. With a gun. If and he you... shoot with the gun, uh, one of his friends get damage. Yes. Range attack. So any kind of range attack, if you miss a roll, so you roll the dice and you don't hit, I believe this is a four on here that you have to hit. Oh, it's a three. If you don't hit a three, that means you missed. And if there's a survivor in that zone, the survivor gets hit. Now, if you have something like this, we're kind of jumping ahead in the rules here, but mm -hmm. if you have something like this and Doug decides to shoot at these zombies, if he has the range, right, the weapon has the range, he doesn't have to worry about Ned standing here because he's attacking this zone. If he has a an up to two range zone. So that's how it works. And then what Resvon I think was getting a little confused with is if you're all in the same square, even though you're up close, if Doug, his only weapon's a pistol, it's still a ranged attack. So when he attacks, if he misses, someone has to take damage besides himself. So in that case, Ned would take damage if Doug does not roll at least a three. Sorry, I'm hitting the camera again. All right, let's see. I'm looking at the time. We're, we're sliding into this. It's taking longer than I thought it was going to. All right. So let's go ahead and go through, and I'll try to speed this up a little bit, but let's go ahead and go through the um, survivor actions. So on your turn, what you do. So you have three actions. With those three actions, you can move, you can search, you can open a door, and right as, like I said, all you do is you go to the door and you say, I'm gonna open the door. As long as you have a weapon that has the door symbol. And then this one would say, you would open the door and put down a noise token. So you can open a door. So you can um, do that. The next thing that you can do is search the room, which I believe I told you guys to search the room. Um, you can interact with 
the um, pimp crates, you can interact with the um, the objective points. That's another thing you can do. You can also, on your turn, you can trade weapons. You can trade stuff that you have on you with another player, and they can rearrange their stuff for free. Also, when you search, if you search and you find something in a room, you can rearrange your entire inventory for free. It's a free action. Now, you could only search once per each hero's turn. So Josh can only search once. He can't search three times. Wanda can only search once. She can't search three times. Things like that. So on that play, that survivor's turn, they only can search um, once. Did you say when they can give this card? Do you want to tell them when they can get that card? Yes, when they can give that card. When they search, they can use one of this card. Uh -huh. But when they can use that card. Uh -huh. You're going to explain to them when they can get one of the I... red cards? Uh, I think I forgot, but I think if they give r r one of this, uh, they can use one of this extra search. In that, have so good things. Wow, it's so cute. <laughs> the, uh, make a noise or don't make a noise. Next time, I'll, I'll try to. You want that one? <laughs> so, yes, when you get one of these yellow pimp objectives, you get a um, yellow card. Or not a yellow card. You get one of these red cards. Right. And you randomly get it. So you just take one off the top. You get whatever one is there. All right. So those are your actions. You can move. You can open doors. You can interact. Right? I always look at opening doors as interact. Um, but you can open doors as long as you have a weapon that allows you. You can do objectives. You can do the um, the pimp crates. Now with objectives, you also get five adrenaline points for picking up one of these objectives or flipping them over. Sometimes you're looking for a different color objective. All right. And when they get damaged, the uh, hero of here, they lose their life. That's where they lose their life. Yep. And if you get yes. down to the skull, you're dead. Yes. No more moving once you get to the skull. All right. So another thing to know about um, searching rooms, you can't search a room if there's zombies in the room. That's a no-go. You, you have The room has to be zombie free. Same with interacting with um, objectives or getting things from the pimp crate. Once you do that, you just remove the token from the board so other people can't go there. And when the people in a one room uh, and zombie in there, th he can't move out. He have to stay there, kill all the zombies, then he can move out, back, or next. Mm, what I wanted to say. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, the other thing to remember is if you use a weapon that has noise, tokens, you put it down. When, oh, we didn't say the one thing you can do is attack. I knew there was something we forgot. Yes. And the other thing you can do is attack. And as we went over the cards already, I'll just do this really quick. You have your ranged weapons that can attack at range. This is zero to one, and it makes noise when it attacks. You have your melee weapons, which is range of zero, makes no noise. Right? And the attack works the same for both of them. The only difference is with range, you need to know line of sight. And line of sight works just like movement line of sight. Right, You have your range and then you have line of sight. So you have to be able to see them and then you have your range, how far you can shoot. Like the, if these zombies were right here, Doug can't shoot them because he doesn't have diagonal line of sight. And that's not one range, that's technically two range away. So he, even if he had a two weapon range, he can't shoot in this area. All right, so what you do, so let's go ahead and go through it. So you're gonna attack Let's say Doug attacks, he rolls one die, he has to get three or better. This comes with the dice that you can roll right here. I've gone out and bought, I think these are 12 millimeter die, so they can fit in the case, but you roll your die. I got a two, that means I didn't hit the zombie, it's a miss, right? Now the melee, it's the same thing, you would check range, right? And um, so Wanda here, let's say Wanda's out here. She's ready to mix it up with some zombies. Wanda would roll the die, right? She gets a six. That means she gets a hit, 
right? With the bat, she has to have three plus, she got a six, that means she gets a hit. And also, I'll point out really quick, with the um, axe, you roll, uh, is that one die? I can't see under here, I thought it the axe yes, rolled two. Oh, uh, that's one, one die. die. Okay, so there are some weapons that you can roll more die. So, if she, Wanda had a weapon, you can roll more die. Wanda have a, um, two die. Oh, the bat does have two dies. So, with the bat, you would roll dice. So, what you do when it's time to attack, melee or ranged, is you just kind of read the bottom. Do I have the range? How many dice? What do I have to roll? And how many hit points is it? So, Wanda, if she rolls two, now she gets two hits. Let's say, I keep messing this up really bad. Just, uh, yes. Two, two zombies. Then can she can on. kill two zombies. Two zombies, yes. Then two zombies go off the board. Once she kills a zombie... But if it's happened, for example, if two zombies stay here, just she can use one of them. Because it's a fatty, it's a runner, and she have a one damage in here, then just she can kill the runner. Yeah. Yeah. And with... Um, ranged attacks, you have a priority. See if I can find it. There's a priority in ranged attacks. There is, I know what it is, but I just want to show you guys. There's a priority for ranged attacks, and it shows in here. So um, when you're shooting with a ranged weapon, which are pistols, you have to shoot certain order. So you have to shoot Fatty or the Abomination first, then the Walkers, then the Runners. That's the order when you're doing range attack. When you're doing a melee attack... I want to say something different. If it's... Don't tell me I want to say something. Oh, okay. If you're doing a melee attack, you can pick which um, zombie you're attacking. But you have to at least be able to do that damage. So Wanda has a one. She can't do damage on the um, fatty. But right here, Josh has a axe. If Josh were in that square, he can kill the fatty if he gets a proper swing, a proper die roll. What do you want to say? Okay. Uh, when we are going in the uh, open the room, for example, these are try to open the room. Okay, they open the room. The door, when it's going to the open, we have uh, some zombies in this zone. In the one in the light zone, we don't have uh, zombies, but in a dark zone, we have uh, some zombies. How we can understand how much zombie we have in this? We can use, for example, we say for this, we use this, and uh, with the color, we can use, uh, we can understand how much, I think it's better I use other card for this. For example, uh, we are blue, all of us, then we open this door. We can say, okay, one walkers here. We put one walker in this, okay, and for Next room, we can put one of them, one runners. We put one runner in here too. Then we can go inside that and try to kill or search or keep one of this. Okay. Yep, get one of the objectives. Okay. All right. So that is the hero. Um, I keep calling them heroes. That's the survivor phase, right? You go until all the survivors have had their turn. Once that's done, then you have your zombie phase. And what happens in the zombie phase is all zombies move one, and they're going to move to wherever. First, it's line of sight. So right here, he can see Ned. Even if, let's say, these guys down here, oops, Maybe that's not the best place to put those. Let's say these guys down here have made two noise each, right? And so Ned may the same Ned made a noise. So that's two. Right here, there's four. First, he's gonna go line of sight. He can see Ned. But if they have more noise, he's gonna move one towards where the most noise is. Right? Once that happens, then you go ahead and spawn. These are zombie spawn zones. And you start, the black one is the starter zombie spawn zone. And we're grabbing from the middle because I set up the front a certain way. So, you normally take a card off the top. So, for this zone, we would flip it over. That's crazy. It tells us to put six walkers out. I'm not going to grab six walkers for you guys right now. Because it's the video is already getting a little long in the tooth. Alright, so I'm not going to grab six walkers. But you'd put six walkers right there. Then you go clockwise around the um, table. 
Once you've done that one, then you draw for the next one, and we can take this one, and this has, if we're in blue, zero runners. Then you go to the next one, and you would draw yourself another card, and you flip it over, and it's zero because we're in the blue. So then they would get zero. Once you've spawned, knocking the camera all over. Yep. It's a bad stand. Sorry, guys. We did our best. We forgot the stand stuff, or I did. All right. So once you've spawned all your zones, then you do cleanup. And this is where you get all these things. Like I said, sorry, guys. Sausage fingers. I'm trying to get this. You take all your noise tokens and you throw them in there. You go ahead and take. The first player token, if you're playing two players, you give it to the other person. If each, if you're playing six, you just give it to the next person clockwise. Then they start their turn. They do their stuff, next person, next person clockwise. And you keep doing that until either the zombies kill you and you lose. There are certain objective things is that you can no longer achieve, then you lose. Or you um, achieve your objectives. And that would be how you win um, Zombicide. Now that's the normal Zombicide. If you guys have played normal Zombicides, a lot of this is probably really familiar. Um, some of the changes that we saw from Fantasy, which some of you guys might know, are these cars. I can talk about how the car works really quick, try to do it quick before um, we jump out of here. So how a car works is all you have to do is go into that zone. As long as there's no zombies, you can get in the car. The car can hold four people. You can change who is driving. Now, you look at this reference card and it tells you all the stuff you need to know, right? And so what you got going here is your movement and um, your your um, damage that it makes. Does it make any noise? Things like that. So you don't have to spend an action to get in the car or get out of the car. Now you can use actions to do things such as um, slow move. One action for slow move, which brings you right here. Er it takes you one zone. You don't hurt anybody because you can hurt your own heroes. So if you have your heroes in the zone, you can hurt them, right? You can do two um, or you can do speed, which is one action, but allows you to go two zones. But that will kill everything or do damage to everything that's in each zone. It's getting caught in there, right? That's how um, the cars pretty much work. I'll let you guys look up the cars for a little more information if you want push these back together. And then the difference is uh, with the police cars, you can always search. If there's a police car in that zone, you can search it and you just grab something from here. If you get anything that's not a weapon, you go ahead and discard it and you grab another Molotov cocktail weapon. You can keep that. So police cars can be searched at all time. Well, of course you only search once per player turn, but they can always be searched, right? With the um, pimp ride, we flip it over. They have, I don't have any of them out, so we'll just steal one off the board here. They have a pimp crate in the trunk. Now, with the police car too, you don't have to search it when you first get there. You can search it after you stop, so on and so forth. The police car, you can constantly search. The pimp mobile, you can only search once. You get that pimp crate once. Just like one of the objectives from here, you discard it. I'm just gonna go ahead and throw it back right there. And you get a random card right off the top of the pimp card deck and we've seen this one right and that player gets it and so that's basically how the cars work like i said you guys can do a little more looking if you want you have these reference cards that kind of explain everything to you all right it's a little bit longer than i thought the video was going to be but did i miss anything Reswan? do you, can you no. think anything no you think we did a good job yes all right so that is our how to play for Travel Zombicide, um, second edition. I'm Steven. I'm Rizmar. And we're Cardboard Coalition. Enjoy. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.